Good morning and welcome to worship at Lake Harbor United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Mary Ivanov, grateful to worship with you here in our sanctuary and for those who are joining us online. We continue our focus on the Beatitudes, the blessings of Jesus today in Matthew chapter 5. And today our focus is uh, on the sixth Beatitude, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. And so we'll uh, sift through what that means. How do we strive to be pure in heart? What does it mean for us uh, to see God and God's work and blessing all around us? And I want to invite uh, Carol Cope to come forward to lead us this morning. Uh, we'll continue to read as we have been every week reading from Matthew 5. Uh, you'll be invited to uh, read part of that this morning. Good morning. Please stand at the table. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. The disciples came to him and began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they, they will be filled. Blessed, blessed are the merciful, for they, for they will be shown mercy. mercy. Blessed, blessed are the pure in heart, for they, they will see God. God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. <laughs> what is going on? Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. We'll get you together. Is it me? One moment, please. Hang on. Oh, is there some? One moment. There we go. All right. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those for who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who before you or were before you. Please remain standing for the call to worship. Come and see the love God has given us. Come, Come and, and see, see what it means to be children, children of God. God. Come with this hope that Christ's presence is real. With, with joy, joy we, we come, come to, to see, see the Lord. Lord. And I'd invite you to remain standing. We'll sing, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Uh, you'll see the words projected on the screen. Open the eyes of my 
Would you remain standing as we pray? God, in your love, you welcome us as your children. Through your care, you have shaped the universe. With your mercy, you hear our prayers. Hear, hear us, us as, as we, we come, come before, before you in worship. worship. Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior, in our weakness, you call us. In our confusion, you teach us. In our troubles, you offer us peace. Meet, Meet us, us as, as we, we come, come to, to hear, hear your, your word. word. Spirit, living one, in the beginning you breathed life. In chaos and darkness you brought hope. In many tongues you spread good news. Transform, Transform us as, as we open our minds and hearts to you. God, loving Father, Son, and Spirit, we come, even with doubts and fears, even in ignorance. We, we know we have, have sinned against, against you, your, your creation, and your, and your people, people by, by what we've done. done and what we left undone. Trusting, Trusting in your, in your love, love, we turn again, again to you. As we open our hearts to your mercy and forgiveness, grant us your peace. Accept these prayers, accept our worship, accept us through your love. Amen. And friends, as we offer those words of confession, as we offer our prayers, we also hear words of forgiveness and promise. Beloved, we are God's children. We trust in God's love for us today and every day. In the strong name of Jesus, we are forgiven and freed. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. as we come together we're grateful to remember that this is holy time and holy space as we offer God our worship and so I'd invite you to join me in sharing peace this morning the peace of the risen Christ is with you and also with you for those gathered here take a moment greet those near to you with signs of peace if you're joining us online this morning uh, offer a greeting let us know that you're worshiping with us and I would invite the kids to come forward All right, you ready to say good morning? Count of three, you and me together, and we'll see if everybody answers us, all right? Here we go. One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. Excellent. All right, so I have some things for you uh, to look at this morning and to remember. I'm going to give you one of these so I don't forget. So we've been talking about all these special ways that Jesus um, says that we're loved and blessed. 
Can I give you one of these? I'm going to give this to Grandma, okay? All right. It's a special page that talks about all these special blessings. So this is where we find it in the Bible where Jesus talks about how we're loved and blessed. And so I want to I share with you a couple things. We've talked a lot on the last few weeks. Let me get my note here so I remember. So I can remind myself, all right? So we talked about how we need God. And you have something very special on today. What are you wearing today? What's this? A life jacket. A life jacket. For yeah. Swimming. For swimming. Yeah, that's exactly what we kind of talked about the first week we talked about these beatitudes. What is this one? Do you know what that is? Noodle. A noodle. A pool noodle. Kind of used for the same thing, right? We need to be safe when we're swimming. And so um, that's kind of a reminder how much we need God. Right? And we've talked about how God helps us when we're sad and how we can love one another when we think of other people and maybe think what would um, give them, uh, make them smile. That's one way we can think of others first. We can try to do what's right and what's fair and what's kind. And then last week, if you want to see, do you want to hold this in your hand or just look at it? The puppet will hold it. Fair enough. Yeah, that's a cross that reminds us of how much God loves us. And today, what do I have? I have a heart. I have two of them. Do they look a little different to you? Yeah. This one's pretty flat, isn't it? Yeah. This one. See if you can squeeze this. I'm going to take this one, and then you can see if you can squeeze this. All right. Yeah. Can you squeeze it? It's like a tennis ball. It's kind of like a ball, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So when we talk about um, loving God first, always keeping God first, that reminds us that it's about our hearts, Right? Where's your heart in your body? It's right right up here or so. Yeah, right underneath that life vest you got on. Right, so we are thinking about how we love God and how we have the right attitude, right? Doing the right things because we love God, okay? So it's about how we feel on the inside, too, that helps us do what's right on the outside, all right? So have you ever seen a bonfire? Have you ever had a bonfire? Yeah. You had s'mores. Nice. Also a plug for the s'mores trail mix that's going to be on sale today for you. As he's doing everything right this morning. So s'mores, right? Sometimes we toast marshmallows. But how do you keep a fire burning? What do you need to have? Um, sticks and wood. Sticks and wood, yeah. And they have to be kind of close together, don't they? Mm -hmm. Right. If one of those big logs on the fire gets moved away, it doesn't burn, does it? Because it has to be near everything else to be able to burn. It has to be able to catch on fire from the others, right? So uh, we, need, we need to kind of be the same way with our hearts. We need to have that right focus. We need to stay close to God, right, so that we can do the right things and love God and love other people too. And it means staying close to each other, right, being together so that we can help each other love God too, all right? So let's pray this morning. You want to squeeze this one more time? Great. Awesome. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to stay close to you so that we can follow you all the way. We want to live for you. We want to love others like you love us. And we know that we need your help. Help us to pay attention to how you're with us all the time and celebrate the beautiful world that you've created. Help us to follow Jesus in all that we say and all that we do. We pray it in his name. Amen. We have the blessing of offering uh, those times when God's power and presence have been uh, especially meaningful to us. It's a wonderful way to, for us uh, to think about um, and focus, keep our focus on God's uh, presence with us. And so Carol's going to share a God moment this morning. I have the nicest thing happening at my house, and I just had to tell you this story. Um, at my house out by the street, I have a mailbox, which most of you have. It has a post that goes straight up and another post that goes here, and the mailbox is on top of this post. Well, the crossbar piece is a plastic square, and in the front there is a little decorative square that covers up the hole. Well, the one in the back is missing. 
um, a family of wrens has decided to make a little nest in the back of my, I had a good talk with them. I said, that's not a good idea. There's something wrong with the mailbox. It doesn't shut good. But they decided to go against my advice and build it anyway. Well, I can't tell which is the male, which is the female. They come and go so fast. I call them both little bird because they're just this big. They're maybe two inches long. They're the tiniest little things. And we have babies. When, whenever a bird goes in, you can hear cheep, 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 all these little birdie noises, but you can't see in there. In fact, yesterday I was telling my son about the baby runs, and he got, out, he got up his phone and took a picture, and he said, no, it just looks like sticks. And I'm thinking, Mama's smart. She's told the babies to hide when she's not around. And sure enough, she went in the hole, and you could hear cheep, 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 cheep. But they have just brightened up my days. Sometimes I find myself sitting on the front porch just so I can watch who goes in and out. And I have the babies learn to fly yet? And I tell you what, it's been so pleasant watching them. Um, Bill comes to see me probably twice a day. He backed into the driveway the other day, and little bird got out of her hole and sat down on the driveway and looked up at his car like, are you here again? <laughs> anyway, when we have babies, I will let you know. That's my God moment for the week. <laughs> Thanks to Carol for sharing with us. And again, an invitation uh, to you to write those down, to send those in. If you're joining us online this morning, you can uh, send them to our email, office at lakeharborumc.org, and we'll make sure to include them for worship next week. Uh, I want to remind you to take a look at uh, the, the May newsletter, if you ha or the June newsletter, if you haven't yet, and invite you, if you have anything for our July newsletter, to make sure to include that and get that to our office this week. Uh, I want to invite you to join us tomorrow night. We have our next brainstorming time. Uh, we'll be at the Mertz's house in Grand Haven and looking at two series that, are, uh, that we'll be doing this summer. One of them is about apathy, overcoming apathy. The other is about uh, how um, we understand, relate to, use technology in line with our faith. So uh, very relevant things, uh, interesting topics to talk about, uh, and your feedback, your uh, help to do that would be wonderful. So um, it's a, a great way to, to be part of what we do here at Lake Harbor. Uh, there are packets at the back. If you want to take one of those, look it over. Uh, if you're able to join us, we would love to have you. You can sign up today. Uh, even if you can't join us tomorrow night but would be willing to look through that and offer your feedback, we would love that as well. So um, thanks to our worship team for all they do. And uh, I really appreciate uh, being able to plan worship within community and, and to have that feedback. Uh, our Tuesday morning Bible study will meet this week uh, at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning. Uh, care team meets on Wednesday. Our youth groups will uh, gather together on Wednesday evening at the Batten Club in town. Uh, and then coming up next week, beginning on June 24th, we have Vacation Bible Camp. So uh, Camp Firelight is the theme, and it's all about trusting God no matter what. So we're looking forward to that. We had a great meeting Thursday night uh, for all those who will be in leadership, and it takes lots of people to be part of that. So uh, the kids who are there will uh, experience a Bible story. They'll do some mission work together. They'll uh, do some science and games, and they'll do some crafts. So it's going to be a wonderful time. Uh, for any of the kids in your life, please invite them, even if they're able to come for one night. Uh, if they can't come every night, that's okay. Uh, we'd love to have them when they're able. So uh, 24th through 27th in the evening, Monday through Thursday. And then on that 27th, on the Thursday night, our MNO team uh, is going to host a hot dog roast before Vacation Bible Camp begins at 5.15. And everybody's invited to come and enjoy that. So uh, keep that in mind uh, coming up a week from tomorrow. We continue to uh, collect for Mission for Area People and uh, food and clothing. We have a box at the back if you want to bring anything in. Our Vacation Bible Camp is looking for specific donations for Kids Food Basket. And so you'll see a list in your bulletin. Uh, if you can bring that in within the next week, that will really help them, especially as they're going to be packing some, uh, some meals together. 
for Kids Food Basket during Vacation Bible Camp for one of their, their, their mission evenings. So uh, keep that in mind. And I want to offer a word of thanks again for all those who are going to be leading during Vacation Bible Camp. Uh, we come to a time of offering, and I, again, I would encourage you to write down those God moments and prayer requests that you have to put those in the offering plates uh, along with the gifts that you might want to give. Uh, there are noisy buckets at the back for uh, our map, for Matt Medical Fund, which will receive our noisy offering this month. Uh, so lots of ways that we can worship God, offer our gifts, uh, offer the prayers of our hearts. And as we hear beautiful music this morning, uh, we'll be able to read the God moments that were offered during this past week. So let's worship God together this morning. let us pray. God of love, you abide with us. You provide for our needs and guide us in your ways. Out of gratitude for your care, we offer our gifts. Use them for your work of caring so that all may feast at the table of your abundance, walk without fear, and drink deeply from the well of compassion. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. And as we hear this reading from Scripture, I pray that God would open our hearts and minds to the reading, hearing, understanding, and living of this holy word. This comes from 1 John, one of the letters that's in the way back of uh, the New Testament. 1 John chapter 3, beginning with verse 1 and continuing uh, through verse 10. See what love. The Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. 
everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Everyone who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born of God do not sin because God's seed abides in them. They cannot sin because they have been born of God. The children of God and the children of the devil are revealed in this way. All who do not do what is right are not from God, nor are those who do not love a brother or sister. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, open our hearts, and as we invite you to prepare a space in us, transform us by your grace and love. And I would invite you to, uh, you can remain seated, we'll sing Sanctuary, and we'll sing it uh, two times through. us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. That's how Eugene Peterson paraphrases this beatitude, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. It may be that most of us think of children when we read pure in heart. Somehow we've prescribed the idea of innocence and purity to this blessing from Jesus. And that may be true to some extent, but Jesus is talking to us at every age. He's inviting us to seek God and to make room for God. And it would seem that the people who heard these blessings on the mountainside long ago struggled just like we do. Maybe there was a lot going on in their lives and it was easy to crowd out taking time and keeping connection with God. Maybe it was this struggle thinking that being faithful means having all of the answers and never doubting and always feeling great. Well, here's something to know. You don't need to have all the answers. Being faithful does not mean never having doubts. Being faithful does not mean we always feel great. There are questions, there are struggles. Being pure in heart doesn't mean being right or getting everything right. It's more about who we are and how we understand our relationship with God. It's about putting our relationship with God first so that we can see more clearly how God is working in our lives and in the world. When we started our focus on the Beatitudes uh, a little over a month ago, I shared that one of our worship team members called these blessings a resume of our faith life. And I keep coming back to that beautiful and challenging idea. Those who are pure in heart seek God's kingdom first. 
And if we want to really talk about what pure in heart means, this may help us. Pure in heart. A singleness of heart in our priorities, motives, and intentions. A singleness of heart. Being wholehearted in our desire to love God and serve God. Putting being a disciple first in our lives. And it seems that when that's our motivation, when we're trying to seek God's way first, then we'll know our need for God. As I started thinking about what it means to be pure in heart, as I started thinking about how that affects us, then it sort of took me back to all these other Beatitudes. If we're seeking God's way first, then we'll know our need for God. The first Beatitude. If we're seeking God's way first, then we'll experience comfort even in the most mournful times. And I want to tell you, there have been mournful times this week. When we seek God's way first, we'll find our strength as we're led by God's grace. Remember, meekness is not weakness, but strength in God's grace. When we seek God's way first, we'll reflect God who is gracious, merciful, and loves always. When we seek God's way first, our hearts will be more focused on God and less focused on our desires and our wants and our prideful ways. Because we battle against it every day. And if the heart is the place of true motivation, then we all have work to do. As I started thinking about what it means to be pure in heart and I've said to a lot of people, as we've gone through this series, it is a challenge. What does it mean to be pure in heart, to have a wholehearted devotion to God? We have work to do. If we're honest, do we struggle with having a pure heart? Do we struggle with doing right for the right reasons? We may struggle with guilt or pressure when what Jesus truly wants is for our hearts to be transformed and for our motives to be pure and authentic. To do right for the right reasons. Jesus is calling us to live wholeheartedly because he knows that our lives can be fractured. And our witness can be compromised when we say one thing and do another. Anybody ever struggle with hypocrisy? Anybody really good at calling it out in other people? (laughs) But struggling to see it in yourself? Our lives can be fractured and our witness compromised when we say one thing and do another. Maybe Jesus is pushing us to be honest about the real struggle to have that wholehearted devotion. Jesus wants our intentions to be right, not just for us to do right. And maybe sometimes our actions can get us there, but it's a hard blessing to hear that my intentions and my motivations matter. It's not just about what I do, but why I do it. It's not about being perfect. It's not about what I can accomplish or how I compare myself to anybody else. It's about desire and direction. Desire and direction. And I read this this week, and it really, really stuck with me. You'll see it here. To be truly faithful is to come to God asking that our beliefs and actions be informed rather than simply endorsed. That we would be informed. That that's where we come first. We come to God first. To inform us rather to endorse us. It's a powerful statement as I thought about how often we come to God planning our way first rather than seeking God's way. Anybody ever do that? I've done it. God, here's what I'd like. I got my plan. Just bless it. It's what I want. You ever done that? Rather than hearing what Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God. God, what do you want? And we hear Jesus say it, not my will, but yours, oh God. It's a hard, hard challenge to hear. Does faith determine our decisions, or do we allow our decisions to determine our faith? A convicting question and a challenge when Jesus says that the pure in heart are blessed. 
And so it led me to those words in 1 John. Now, 1 John is a letter written to the early church. <clears throat> and if you read some of the language, it has lots in common with the Gospel of John. But it's a powerful letter. And the beginning of chapter 3 especially is powerful. We are children of God. Our spiritual lives are founded on God's grace. God takes the first step to love us, and so we respond. And the writer of 1 John calls us to be committed. It's a reflection of what Jesus talks about when he says that the pure in heart are blessed. And we know that those blessings from Jesus are countercultural. Jesus points to God, and we're surrounded when we think about those blessings, think about what we're surrounded by. We're surrounded by lots of opportunities to let our hearts be divided. But we seek to follow Jesus' way of love, grace, mercy, humility, and forgiveness. Instead of the way that leads us toward hatred and pride and grudges. Anybody struggling with hatred or pride or grudges right now? Anybody struggling to follow that way of love and grace and humility and forgiveness and mercy. We have to be aware of the temptations that we face, not just the ones that come to mind quickly, but even the tinges of jealousy, the reality of greed, the prejudices we hold, and anything else that seeps in and takes away the focus from following Jesus. It's something that's a daily decision for us. God is the source of the blessing, not simply showering us with more. Again, understanding what blessing looks like. God isn't just showering us with more. It's not the accumulation of tangible stuff that requires us to find room for more and leaves us unsatisfied. But the blessing of drawing nearer to God and finding our satisfaction in a relationship that offers new life and hope and peace and joy and love that does not end. Because at some point the stuff will not matter anymore. And seeing that witness played out publicly is powerful. Seeing that witness of what it means to be focused Seeing those glimpses of the kingdom of God is powerful. I've seen it in lots of ways. But I've, come, I've kept coming back to something that I saw on TV. I actually didn't see it when it aired, but some of you maybe have seen it uh, floating around Facebook. It's a positive thing, thankfully. Um, some of you might know that this year, 2024, is the 30th anniversary of Sister Act 2. Anybody know the movie? Yes. Uh, by the way, um, 1994 was the year I graduated from high school. So to say 30 years seems like a lot. Just going to put that out there. But there was this performance of songs from Sister Act 2 that was on a daytime talk show. And in the middle of this daytime talk show, a choir sang two songs. Oh, happy day. And joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Spiritual songs, deeply, deeply spiritual songs, deeply, deeply faithful songs. And it was amazing. I have, I have it saved just so I can go back and watch it when I need a little something. It was a moment that, when that line between heaven and earth became a little blurry. And in the middle of a daytime talk show, there was church and there was worship and there was witness. Beyond all the things that we see, beyond all the things that we hear, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away, he taught me how to watch and pray, to fight and pray. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, hail thee as the sun above. It's powerful. I'll send you the link. You can watch it a couple times. First John, it's clear that our identity as children of God moves us to righteous, righteousness, doing what is right in light of God's call and claim on our lives. But the writer is also clear that loving others is a clear mandate for those who are children of God. 
Love is the foundation. Love is the way. Love is vital. And living in that love brings a blessing. Those who first received this letter found a connection in their common faith in Jesus who was raised from the dead. They believed in the power of resurrection. And it gave them a new identity as children of God. And because they believed... They could see, understand, and experience God's work all around them. And when we are looking for how God is at work, we'll see it. We'll see it in the wren who's building a nest. We'll see it in the middle of daytime TV where there's a song that reminds us of God's goodness. We'll see it in hard places, in a hospital room, where there is prayer, where there is peace. When we are looking for how God is at work, we'll see it. When we anticipate that God is working for good, we'll see it. When we expect that God is always up to something good, we'll see it. When we believe that God can, God does, and God will bring hope where there is despair and love, where it's lacking, we'll experience it. And when we're looking, when we're seeking, then we'll see God all around us. And if we claim to be children of God, if we claim that, then we're looking, and we're anticipating, and we're expecting And if we claim to be children of God, then we have to act like it. If we claim God's love, then we have to love. If we claim to have a relationship with God, then we have to show it in how we live. And if we're putting God first, if being a disciple is our priority, then we pay attention. Paying attention matters. We stay connected to God and to each other. We pray and worship and serve and give and love, not out of guilt, but because it's the only response to the goodness of God. It's the only response to the good news that God loves and forgives and restores and heals and helps and is always with us. Our practice of God moments here at Lake Harbor helps us, helps us to aspire to be more pure in heart, I think. There's something about that intentionality of saying, where is God at work? Even in the smallest things, there's something powerful about the witness we offer and how it can encourage others to seek God, to draw nearer to the one who creates and redeems and sustains, to be grateful for small things, and to remember that God's presence is with us. That we are not alone and we trust in the power of God to help us overcome sin and even give us new life in death. This week was one of those weeks when death and resurrection was right in front of me. Right there. Some weeks are like that. Being with people in the midst of difficult moments and witnessing the grief that is the product of of deep love. And I thought more than once about words from one of the, the affirmations of faith that we sometimes say. In life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. They are simple words, but a profound witness that believing really is seeing. Believing helps us to see how God is working. So, not just for me, but for the world, there was uh, another significant, notable passing this week. Reverend James Lawson died this week. If you don't know his name, you've heard of his work. He was a proponent of nonviolence and very influential in the civil rights movement. He worked alongside Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and was an advocate for justice throughout his 95-year life. He was also a United Methodist pastor. His work was grounded in faith in Jesus, rooted in the love of God for himself and for all people, spurred on by the Holy Spirit. Blessed are the pure in heart, 
for they will see God. For him, for those we love, for those we remember, pure in heart, seeking God first, loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving others. Shane Stanford writes that our purity in heart matters so much because, the, because of that promise that Jesus offers, that the pure in heart will see God, and how well we see God, how well we experience God, affects how well others see God reflected in us. Because, see, that's the other part. It's not just about what we experience, but what others experience because of the faith we claim. It's about our witness because when we're pure in heart, our foundation is God's love. And that's not a promise that we won't struggle, but it is a promise of a firm footing when things shift. It is a promise that we won't be unable to respond when troubles come, but we'll learn and we may even grow closer to God in the midst of it. It is a promise that we can stand in humility and hope that God is present and working for good. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, there are lots of prayers on our hearts and minds, lots of people who come to mind today as we pray. And as we offer our prayers, we acknowledge both the pain and joy of our hearts on this Father's Day. In the spirit, with thanksgiving for our fathers in faith, hear our prayers. To those who welcomed a child, we celebrate to those who lost a child through death, whether recent or not, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through failed adoptions, through those who are struggling when children have run away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, we want to walk with you when we pray that you would forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make it harder than it is. To those who are foster dads and mentor dads and spiritual dads and father figures, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with their children, we celebrate. And to those who struggle to have warm and close relationships, but instead experience disappointment and heartache and distance. We sit with you. To those who have lost their fathers, whether recent or long ago, we grieve with you. To those who have experienced abuse at the hands of their fathers, we acknowledge that experience, we pray for healing. To those who have lived through all the testing of fatherhood and parenthood, we pray. For fathers of children conceived but not born, we remember them and you today. To those who have wanted to father children but have not been able to, we mourn that life has not turned out the way that you longed it to be. To those who are step-parents, we walk with you on complex paths, to those who have envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, and yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you, to those who will have emptier nests, we grieve and rejoice with you, to those who have placed children up for adoption, we remember how you hold that child in your heart, and to those who have adopted children, we seek to support you. To those who are anticipating new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. To those who carry sincere worries for their children's safety, we pray for an end to the sin around us that affects so many. Today we pray especially for those communities where there has been violence. We pray for the people in Rochester Hills. 
who experienced an act of gun violence yesterday, for those who were wounded, for those who are healing, for a community in deep grief, to those who have found themselves functioning differently in this past year, caring for family members who once cared for you, we lift you up. For the seen and unseen grief and struggles of men and fathers everywhere, we pray. And for the seen and unseen joys, we celebrate. Thank you, God, for the love that surrounds us and for family you have offered us in Christ, family that is not bound by genetics or legalities, but that is held together in love. Help us, O oh God, to remember that their love offered freely to us is a reflection of your own, an image of you that we remember, that we might remember who we are and whose we are. We pray, O oh God, that strengthened by the knowledge of your love for us, we might go into the world to share that love, to care for the orphan and the refugee. We pray for passion to see that every child of God is sheltered, fed, given clean water, and loved well. We pray for those in places of war and conflict, of famine. Fill us with mercy for those who need care. Fill us with strength and the desire to protect all those who are vulnerable. And stir up in us the will to be instruments of your peace that all your children would grow and flourish. We pray, and we pray that you would hear us as we pray the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we go from here, we pray that we would be wholeheartedly seeking God. Would you stand as you are able and we'll sing together, Be Thou My Vision. go from here and remember that blessing blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God may we expect anticipate and experience the love of God the grace of Jesus the power of the spirit that is with us always go from here go in peace and make peace amen